Hey guys, welcome to week 22 of my fourth pregnancy. Well, 22 weeks today. So, my last video was week 20. I announced to you guys the gender reveal that we're having another girl. So, um, it's, you know, settled in. We're, we're um, used to the fact that we're going to have another little um, baby girl in the house. Um, I've been busy trying to get, you know, my my little girl that we have now, I'm trying to get her room situated and rearranged and move things around so we can make room for her little sister that will be moving into her bedroom shortly. <laughs> um, not feeling my best today though, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not feeling that great. Um, let's see, the weekend of my 20th week vlog that I did for you guys. Um, that weekend, that Saturday night, I think I did that vlog on a Friday and then the following day on that Saturday, um, my son woke up in the night, excuse me, crying, um, which is like a norm for him, but oh my gosh, this indigestion is killer, which is a norm for him. He usually wakes up every night because he's got to go pee and he's scared to, I guess, go to the bathroom alone. He's four, so, you know, it's understandable. He's still scared of the dark and stuff. But, so, you know, it's normal for him to come running in our room at night. So, you know, I got up with him and, you know, let him go to the bathroom. And I asked him, I said, are you feeling okay? And, and he said, I don't feel good, Mommy. And he said, I got a headache. And I was like, you got a headache? And so I took his temperature because he felt warm, you know. And his temperature was like around 102 something like that. So I gave him some Tylenol, put him back in bed. And then about 30 minutes later, our little girl wakes up, Talia wakes up. <laughs> she uh, is two, she just turned two years old. So she wakes up crying and I'm like, gosh, what is going on? And she felt warm. So I took her temperature and she had 102 fever too. And I'm like, oh no, both my kids are getting sick. What is up? Um, so, you know, we gave her some Tylenol as well, and I kind of rocked her a little bit in the, in the chair, and she eventually closed her eyes and went back to sleep, but, um, Saturday night was just a long night, and then Sunday morning, my son was fine after I gave him the Tylenol the next morning, he woke up and he felt great, and he was fine the rest of the day, and he's fine up until now, and he's great. Um, but Talia, you know, the next morning on Sunday, she just was still cranky and fussy and I couldn't leave the room without her crying and, and wanting to be with mommy constantly and just wanting to be held and rocked and she wasn't eating, she wasn't drinking, which is not like her. My four-year-old son is completely picky and I can, I can barely get that kid to eat anything healthy. <laughs> and it's like a battle, a daily battle to try to get him to eat something <laughs> but my little girl is you know not picky at all and I can get her to eat anything just about but she didn't want anything to do with food she didn't want any of her bottles you know so I tried to give her juice Pedialyte didn't want nothing to do with it so throughout the day I think by the time it came to like 1 30 in the afternoon I was like all right she's not getting any better um so being that it's Sunday, the pediatrician is not open on a Sunday, but there is a place that we have here, thank God, and it's called um, Nightlight Pediatrics. Um, and they're open like after hours, after your doctor's office is closed, and they're open on the weekends. Um, and they specialize in kids from like birth up until I think 18. So I took her in there, and um, they, you know, ran her, you know, checked her heartbeat and checked her temp, which um, when I left my house that afternoon, her temp on my thermometer that I have at home, it was around like a hundred. So I was like, oh, it's going down a little bit. But when I took her up there, they took it with their specialized thermometer that they use and it was almost 103. So I was like, not good. So they immediately took her into, you know, the exam room. Um, the doctor came in, asked me questions about her behavior, when did it start, you know, all this stuff, and then um, turns out she had, she was getting um, a pretty bad right ear infection. It's her first ear infection that she's had since she's been born, so, you know, that's nice, but my son, Antonio, he's had several ear infections since birth, 
it's like, uh, you know, the normal for him to get an ear infection here and there. But, um, so she had an ear infection and they put her on some amoxicillin. Um, so I was like really glad that I listened to my motherly instincts and I, yeah, I went ahead and got her into the doctor. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Sunday night, Saturday night was not very good for, you know, any of us. I mean, trying to deal with the sick little ones is, is rough and, uh, being pregnant on top of that makes it even more rough. <laughs> um, but she, you know, it took her a good two or three days by doing the antibiotics and combined with Motrin, Tylenol alternating every four hours over the next few days after Sunday till she finally started getting back to normal and eating some, drinking some, but su Sunday night and Monday night was horrible <laughs> because she just, I, I knew that, you know, when little ones have ear infections, when they lay down at night, all the fluid and stuff that's caused, that's built up, that caused the ear infection settles in their ear, ear uh, canals here. So it's very, very painful for them. So, um, you know, it's, it's just really painful. So I knew that, you know, they had to be propped up. So, <laughs> so I ended up sleeping on the couch with her and, you know, I was up and down all night making sure she had her medicine every four hours and you know, she'd get into like a nice sleep and then 15 minutes later she'd wake up crying because she either wasn't comfortable or she was hurting. So Sunday and, and Monday were very rough days. <laughs> so that week, you know, was a little tiring and then, you know, but you know, when my son started getting the ear infections, he was having like repeat ear infections. Like he would get one and then it would go into the other ear and then they'd go away with the amoxicillin, and then it would start coming back again. So I would have to get him on a stronger antibiotic. But, you know, we kept asking ourselves, what is causing these ear infections? So um, the pediatrician actually asked, you know, when, when he was around like two or three years old, you know, when he kept getting all these ear infections, we asked him, you know, what, what's causing all these things? Because we was almost to the point to where he was gonna need to get tubes in his ears. So his doctor asked, um, when he drinks his sippy cups, does he lay flat? And so, yeah, he likes to lay down when he drinks. And apparently kids, um, when they lay down and drink, um, they can get air bubbles stuck in their um, sinuses that can also travel to their um, ears, which can build up fluid. So I had no idea that that was causing his ear infections. So we're like, okay. So we need to just eliminate him sleeping, you know, and drinking and, and making sure that he's sitting up uh, when he takes his, his sippy cups and, and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll be fine. And apparently it worked. I mean, he's yet to get another ear infection since we've um, made sure that he just doesn't lay down when he drinks anymore. So, you know, but my little one, Talia, she, she does like to lay down sometimes and drink. So I was like, well, you know, maybe that's what caused it. But she's fine now. I mean, she, she had the amoxicillin for a few days and she's back to normal. Thank goodness. Um, but then that following weekend, which would be uh, this past weekend. <laughs> um, she, uh, we went ahead and just threw her birthday party early um, because her birthday fell um, on May 2nd, which was um, this past Tuesday. Um, but, you know, being in the middle of the week, you know, people work and they can't make it to the party and stuff. So we just decided to have it on Sunday, this past Sunday. So, you know, that weekend I was busy um, just getting the house cleaned up for guests that were coming here and making some food like a day early so I wouldn't have it, everything piled on top of me the day of the party and then I'm getting decorations hung and making sure her gifts were ready and, you know, so I was like one busy bee <laughs> that weekend and then Sunday came, you know, this past Sunday and we had her party and I was all, you know, on my feet all day long, you know, hosting the party and making sure everyone had what they needed and cleaning up and, you know, it was a it, it was a wonderful party and she had a great time and it turned out fantastic but by the end of the day my feet hurt so bad and I was just so tired and uh, you know being on my feet a lot um, and chasing around my kids all the time I don't have a lot of you know I don't remember that I need to keep drinking water throughout the day sometimes I just set my water bottle down and I won't drink until I'm like oh I'm kind of thirsty right now 
and then I'll go and take a few sips and then I'm done. But, you know, I've got to make it a point to just take breaks and drink my water. <laughs> so I got to remember to do that. Um, but starting, uh, let's see, what is today? Today's Friday. So starting, I want to say, Tuesday on her birthday. Um, wait a minute. Was Tuesday the second? Today is the fourth. Or... No, her birthday was on Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday was the second. My days are all mixed up. Pregnancy brain. <laughs> so yes, her birthday was on Wednesday. So that day, being that we had already had her birthday party, I still wanted to do something special for her on her birthday. So um, my mother-in-law, um, we just decided to take the kids to the zoo that day. We have membership membership for the zoo here in Florida. Um, and they have like a little water park in there for the kids. Um, so we just decided to walk around the zoo for a little bit and let her um, enjoy the animals. And then we walked over to, you know, just let them play in the water for a little bit. But, you know, on our way towards the water park, I almost was ready to leave because I just... All that morning I just didn't feel right I didn't feel good um, I was very very lethargic you know exhausted feeling and um, I was really sick to my stomach I didn't eat breakfast that morning because I just didn't feel good when I woke up um, but it just didn't go away throughout the day I was drinking water as we we're walking to the zoo and I'm like you know maybe if I just keep drinking I'll feel better and excuse me but I just kept feeling worse um, but I didn't want to leave the zoo and ruin her little birthday, so I was like, let's just let them go and play in the water for, you know, an hour or so. What was that? Hi, Nitty. <laughs> what was that? Hi. This is Eddie, by the way. This is my kitty, Eddie. Eddie. We have another cat too. She's, um, she, uh, they're actually brother and sister. We got them from the same litter. Uh, but they're both about six, almost seven years old. But she's gray. <laughs> she's gray and white and he's black and white. <laughs> Anyways, back to what I was saying. So we walked over and let them play in the water park for a while. You know, but there wasn't like an area for us to sit in the shade. So I'm trying my best to just stay hydrated. But I just, by the time we left there, I felt like, crap and you know I told my mother-in-law I was like I'm just gonna go on and drop you off at home and I'm gonna go home because I just don't feel good um, so I went home and I called Kurt on the way home and I was like you know I just don't feel well so when I get home he actually stayed home from work that day so I said when I get home can you come help me bring the kids in and I'm gonna take a nap you know so I did I, I lay down on the couch and I zonked out for about an hour and a half or something like that and then uh, you know, we just decided to take Talia and Antonio out to dinner that night for uh, Talia's birthday. So we took her to Texas Roadhouse, and I hadn't hardly eaten at all that day because I felt like crap, you know. But I was like, you know, maybe if I eat something and I have a nice meal, maybe we'll, you know, it'll help me and I'll feel, I'll feel a little bit better once I get something in my stomach. Because um, usually if I wait too long to eat, then I start feeling crappy, you know. But I just felt so sick to my stomach that day, I couldn't eat. But I, throughout the day, I just, I started getting a little bit of an appetite back, but not much. So I was like, let's just go eat dinner and, you know, maybe if I nibble on my, on my meal, I can start to feel a little bit better. So we went to Texas Roadhouse. And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I'm just feeling worse and worse and worse. <laughs> so I ordered like a three-piece um, catfish meal with, um... A baked potato and applesauce on the side and I ate like half of my applesauce a few bites of my baked potato and like half a piece of fish and that's all I could eat I just by the time I ate that I was like full I couldn't eat anymore and I just felt so more nauseated on the way home and then by the time we got home I was so sick to my stomach that I had to go to the bathroom and I just started dry heaving so Wednesday Wednesday wasn't fun either <laughs> but you know I chalked it up to 
the past two weekends I've been running nonstop, you know, and I've been on my feet all the time and, you know, I don't sit down as much. I'm getting bigger with the pregnancy. I'm getting less energy and, you know, I'm, I'm, she, Isabella's getting bigger and heavier. So, you know, it's, it's harder for me to keep up with the kids, you know, and I'm just making all this stuff up in my head as I go. And then I'm like, you know, and on top of not sleeping very much, you know, being out in the sun at the zoo and stuff, I'm probably just really, really exhausted. And it's taken its toll on me. My body's telling me, look, woman, you need to sit your ass down. <laughs> Pardon my language. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. But, you know, so we got home from dinner and I got sick. And then after I got sick, <laughs> I didn't eat anything else the rest of the night. I tried um, to just take it easy the rest of the evening. And I was in bed by 8.30. 8.30 came around. Talia went down for her, her nighttime, well, for her bedtime. And I was like, honey, you're going to have to put Antonio to bed because I, I've got to go to sleep. So I did. I went to bed. And then Thursday rolled around. And, uh which was yesterday. <laughs> yesterday came around and I still didn't feel great that morning when I woke up yesterday morning. But I had my 22 week uh, prenatal appointment yesterday. So I was like, you know, I'm going to the doctors. Maybe they can just, you know, run some tests or something and, and pinpoint what's happening. <laughs> Maybe they can give me some pointers on what to do. Um, but the appointment was good. Um, I actually got um, my blood, blood test results back from the quad screen quad screen, <laughs> quad screen, <laughs> or, uh, blood test, you know, that checks for all, um, like birth defects and Down syndrome and stuff. Um, and it came back normal. Everything is fine with her. And the anatomy scan results from the ultrasound came back normal. So she's doing just fine. Um, her heartbeat was around 160. Um, so Isabella's doing wonderfully. She's growing like a weed. Um, and uh, my weight hasn't changed much. I'm, I'm around like 120 right now. So I've gained like maybe a pound <laughs> since, uh, I don't know, week 19, I think. Um, but, let's see. But my blood pressure was low at that appointment yesterday. They took my blood pressure and it was like 88 over 58. And usually it's low anyways when I'm pregnant. I've mentioned that in my previous vlog so if you haven't seen that when I'm pregnant every time that I get pregnant my blood pressure drops to like the low 90s um, but for it to be in the 80s is not normal my blood pressure is never that low so you know that kind of was a red flag for all of us you know like what is going on um, but they checked my urine and stuff and then the, doc the midwife came in and she's like you know how are you feeling and I was like I'm not feeling very well today it's like the last couple of days I've just felt crappy you know I just I'm nauseated and I've got a touch of a headache and um, I just I don't feel good I feel lethargic and I'm kind of disoriented and you know Kurt kept the kids home with him yesterday so I could just go by myself um, but she's like well you're dehydrated she's like your ketones and your urine is plus two and it should be it should be zero but you're at plus two right now um, and she's like how much water are you drinking and I was like well I was like, I drink water all the time. That's my my main go-to drink. But, you know, I'm not constantly drinking water. Um, and I told her about us going to the zoo, and she's like, no, ma'am. She's like, you don't need to be doing that stuff right now. I was like, yeah, but it was my daughter's birthday, and I wanted to do something special for her. So she understood, but at the same time, she was like, but you're pregnant. You're 22 weeks pregnant, and if you're not feeling good, just don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but being out in the sun, too, that was a big no-no. So it made sense as to why I'm dehydrated. You know, I'm not drinking enough water yesterday when I was at the zoo and the sun, being in the sun, you know, it dehydrated me. So that's what was causing, you know, my disorientation and um, my nausea and feeling just crappy all around. I was so dehydrated. Um, so, you know, yesterday when I got home from the doctors, you know, that she she gave me strict orders. She's like, when you go home, I want you to sit on your butt and do nothing. She's like, I know you've got two little ones at home, but she's like, you've got to try to learn to take breaks. You know, don't be up doing this and doing that. You know, this laundry can wait. You know, the chores can wait. Just, you know, take care of your kids and then sit your butt down and drink some water. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, you know, 
But so that's what I did and that's what I'm doing today. So I still don't feel 100% back to normal, but I'm feeling a touch better. You know, I'm not as nauseated now. Um, but after I eat a meal, I feel a little queasy, but then it goes away. So I'm just not feeling good, you guys. I'm feeling crappy. Feeling really crappy right now. But, you know, um, Kurt's working today and he decided to, he had to go on like a two hour drive to get to um, a place that he goes to for work. Um, so he decided to uh, take Antonio with him to kind of give me a little bit of a break today. And so he'll be gone most of the day. And little Talia is taking a nap. So I figured this would be a perfect time to come outside in the fresh air because it's probably something that I need and um, do my 22 week vlog for y'all and let you know what's been going on, how I'm feeling, my appointment yesterday, um, and just what's been happening. So I've been just a very busy bee these last couple of weeks and it has taken its toll. I am not feeling good, I'm sick, and I'm just feeling crappy. So yeah, that's what's happening this week. <laughs> And my boobs are itching like crazy all the time. So I assume they're going to be growing a little bit more soon. But other than that, baby Isabel is doing great. She's kicking me and squirming all the time. And around like 10 o'clock at night is like her busiest time. <laughs> of course, I'm in bed trying to sleep. And then she's just in there flipping all over the place. So that's fun, you know, at night trying to lay in bed. And she's just like... <laughs> she's just kicking the crap out of me at night. But, you know, it's um, heartwarming, you know, while I'm trying to sleep, and I know that she's in there just having fun. <laughs> and she gets the hiccups all the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sitting there, and all of a sudden, I'll go, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> I just feel her, bloop, 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 bloop. She just hiccups away. <laughs> uh, but from what I've read, you know, it's not as annoying for babies that are in utero to have the hiccups. They don't really care. It's just more when they're out in the world <laughs> is when it hiccups get annoying, you know. Um, but other than that, um, there's not too much else happening this week. Uh, I'm definitely feeling bigger. Um, one symptom that I'm having more of now is that um, something that I've completely forgotten to even mention over the last few weeks because pregnancy brain is killer. I cannot remember anything anymore. I swear, you guys, it is seriously bad, this pregnancy. I, ugh. If it wasn't for my dry erase board writing all my appointments on and having my phone that I keep all my passwords and stuff in, I would be lost because, I mean, poor Kurt will tell me something and then, like, an hour later, I'm like, what? What? Were we supposed to do this today? Or are we supposed to go here today? Or what did you say? You know, and I'm just, I am completely out there, you guys. I just can't remember nothing. And he laughs. He's just like, good lord, your brain's fried. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, it's funny, though. But, um, but the symptom that I've been having the most of right now is Braxton Hicks. Um, I've noticed the very first one that I had was around 17 weeks. Um, I know that's, like, crazy early. And, of course, my midwife and my doctor was like, because you're not drinking enough water. Um, but, yeah. But my last pregnancy with Talia, I noticed the very first Braxton Hicks when I was 14 weeks. Um, and they don't happen all the time. It's not like I'm constantly having contractions through the day. But, you know, I'll notice one here and there. And I'm like, oh, I'm having a contraction right now. And they're not crazy tight like they are towards the end of your pregnancy when it's, like, legit. And you're like, Ugh, okay, i got to stop for a minute and breathe this one out. It's not like that. But I can definitely feel that my belly gets tighter and I'm like, Oh, okay, I'm having a contraction right now. <laughs> um, but it doesn't last long. Sometimes they last, you know, 20 seconds and then it's gone. And sometimes they'll last 30 seconds and then they're gone. So, but I think I have, um, like, a really just overactive uterus. Like, because I'm constantly up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm so busy that, you know, my body's just like, you know, let's have contraction. But, so yeah, I got to be careful with that. But yeah, so that's what's happening this week, y'all. Um, it's kind of a boring vlog this week, I know. I'm sorry, but I just don't have a ton to update on. And uh, I just wanted to 
you know, quickly pop up a video for you guys and let you know what's been happening um, and just say hi and I hope you guys are doing good, better than me. <laughs> um, but I'm under strict orders by the hubby and uh, the doctor to sit my butt down. So that's what I'm doing and I just wanted to quickly come in and say hi and let you know how things are going and um, I... I don't want to keep saying that I'll see you guys next week because, you know, next week rolls around and something happens sometimes and I just don't get to it. Um, oh, excuse me. So I'm just going to say that I will see you guys next time. <laughs> so um, I'll do a quick belly shot for you guys and then I'm going to wrap it up. Move up my camera a little bit so you can see. Baby Isabella at 22 weeks. Alright you guys, I'm going to let you go and I will see you next time. Take care.